Chapter 11 The Genius Lady You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio The Life-Changing System, User By Chen Age 18 Years Old Level 1, 40 100, Description You still need 60 points to level up. Instruction If you wish to change your life to what you have always wanted, proceed with the following missions. Mission Dashboard, Mission 4 Save a genius young lady who is going blind, 30 points, bnoel.m mission 5. Take a night's rest, 5 points, further instruction. The order of mission completion is irrelevant. After you are done with the tasks assigned to you, you will be given a chance to receive special skills or items at random. The skills or items will give you a better life. Bai Chen read the screen with satisfaction. He only needed 60 points more to level up. He was surprised about the fact that Mission 5 was really easy though. What a piece of cake. The boy tapped to see more instructions for Mission 5. Mission 5. Take a night's rest. Instruction. You've completed many missions today, so your body might be worn down. You need to have enough sleep. Reward for success. Win 5 points penalty for failure. None. After reading through the details, Bai Chen smiled faintly. It appeared that this life-changing system really did care about his well-being. He proceeded to check out the instructions for Mission 4 to see the whereabouts of the lady who was going blind. Mission 4. Save a genius young lady who is going blind. Instruction. A young woman, who is a computer science genius, is going blind. Her temperament is very gloomy right now. Vision is her life. If she loses her ability to see, the woman will have suicidal thoughts. If you give her magic glasses at Xing Xiang Park, she will be very grateful. Reward for success. Win 30 points penalty for failure. Lose 30 points. He focused his attention to where the green arrow was pointing without sparing the mission details another glance because he had seen them before. After giving this lady magic glasses, there was nothing else to be done. Just another easy mission like the rest he had completed. Where the end of the arrow pointed was right in front of him. Bai Chin gazed at what was in front. Suddenly, he saw a woman in a white suit. She was sitting on a long marble bench, appearing absent-minded. Though the lady was several meters away, Bai Chen could clearly see that she had a flawless figure. Her legs were long and slender under black stockings. She wore a white skirt slightly above knee length. Her face was so beautiful, like an angel in heaven. Her skin was pale and spotless. Her two eyes were a breath-taking caramel brown. Her long hair was also brown and tied back. She was a beautiful young lady with a ponytail. Pretty, Bai Chen opened his mouth wide in astonishment. His eyes widened while staring at her with a dumb expression. This woman made his heart beat fast. It was the first time in his life that Bai Chen had seen a woman this beautiful. After a while, he returned to normal. The man exhaled a little. She's so beautiful. Bai Chen admitted that he had never seen such a breath-taking woman in his life. After he turned 18, his life was spent in prison. How could he have come across a beautiful woman? He thought that anyone who got to marry this woman would be a very lucky man indeed. She was both beautiful and a genius. If the guy who would get to marry her was not called lucky, then it would be very strange indeed. Too bad we're living in different worlds, Bai Chen mumbled softly to himself. Even though he had never fallen in love or dated a girl, it did not mean that he did not want to have a girlfriend or get married. Back then, he was just too focused on studying to make his parents proud that he did not pay attention to this type of thing. When he was in prison, the thing that he realized, which was one of the things he had regretted the most, was the fact that in this lifetime, he would never get to have a loving family of his own, like how his parents did and how he was born. As the outcome of love between two people. What he uttered to himself was true. He and this genius lady really were living in different worlds. 
she was really out of his league, from economic status to looks. There was nothing that would make Bai Chin an equal match to her. This was the reason why he had sighed previously as well. Bai Chin shook his head and chose to stop thinking about this matter. Let's get this mission over with and go home. He chugged down the rest of the cola in one go and stood up from the bench. Bai Chen threw the can into the bin and looked left and right for a bit. When he saw that no one was there, he sent his thoughts to the white dimension ring that he was wearing on his index finger. Suddenly, beautiful gold dot framed glasses appeared in his hand. It was clear that after Bai Chen had obtained the glasses, he had put them inside the dimension ring. The glasses were not in a transparent state anymore. They appeared right now as a normal object that anyone could see, like normal glasses through and through. Bai Chen stared at the glasses for a little while. He put them in the sleeve of his jacket. The top he was wearing today was a long dot sleeved black jacket over a T dot shirt. His lower body was in black jeans. The net cost of his outfit today was only 300 yuan. Bai Chen could be characterized as a normal 18.year.old young man with a slightly good.looking face. End of chapter 11. Chapter 12 Care for Some Fortune, Telling, Sister. You are listening at Novel Full.audio. Bai Chen stared at the genius lady who was still daydreaming on the marble bench, not moving anywhere. He looked at her for a while before deciding to approach her to get the mission over with and go home. Not long after, Bai Chen was near the marble bench where the genius woman was sitting. Seeing her up close made him fall under her spell even more. She was truly beautiful, even more beautiful than when he was looking at her from afar. Being closer to her, Bai Chen could roughly estimate her age. In his perception, the woman was probably around 20 to 21 years old, not much older. His heart pounded a little faster as he could smell a refreshing scent. This scent was the scent from the genius woman's body, Bai Chen was confident about it. He shook his head a little to get rid of the feelings. The boy tried to adjust his manner to be as normal as possible before walking up to her slowly. Sister, can I sit with you? When he reached the long marble bench she was on, Bai Chen smiled and spoke with a normal tone of voice. The reason that he called her sister was that he was in the body of an 18.year.old boy, not a 30.year.old man anymore. Calling her sister would make approaching her easier, he thought. The genius lady snapped back from zoning out. She looked up at his face before lowering her head again without paying any attention to him anymore. Bai Chin got chills down his spine from locking eyes with her earlier. Her eyes were extremely icy so icy that even his 30.year.old self could not help but freeze. He had never expected that someone who looked like an angel when absent.minded would become an ice queen upon looking. But he managed to calm down quickly. Bai Chen took a deep breath and said to himself softly in his heart, I need to get this done and go home quickly. Looks like this pretty girl is not in a good mood. If you won't say anything, then I'll just take a seat, Bai Chen said without waiting for her to speak a word or raise her head to look up again. He did not choose to sit next to her but left an arm's dot length of distance for fear that it would anger her if he got close. The genius lady did not pay attention to him at all. She just sat there, looking down at the grass, her mind filled with sadness. After she had woken up, she found that her vision got blurry wherever she looked. She tried putting on her glasses, but they did not help at all, so she went to the famous hospital of Xingzhou City to get her eyes checked. After consulting a renowned physician, she learned that both of her eyes were losing their vision. Putting it in simple terms, she was about to go blind. The only way to cure this was to have an organ transplant, which she did not at all want, though the physician said someone had donated their eyeballs before passing away. The reason for her refusal was because she did not want to change the eyes her parents had given her, even though that meant not being able to see again. This woman seriously did not want to have an eye transplant. This matter made her so depressed and down.spirited that she could not carry on working. She stopped everything she had been doing and went out for a change of atmosphere at Xingxiang Park. In one week, 
I'll lose my ability to see. What should I do? The genius woman thought to herself with sadness. Her angelic face was painted with sorrow. Even the grass in front of her right now looked blurry. Sister, what are you doing here? While she was beside herself with sadness, the woman heard the voice of the stranger who was sitting next to her. She turned to look at him a little but paid no attention to him all the same. She thought that this young man was just trying to hit on her like the ones before him. It was clearly not the first time she had experienced this, but it had been recurring quite often. Every time she would pretend not to notice. Bai Chen was not at all surprised that the genius woman did not pay attention to him. He knew very well that this was what usually happened when people were approached by strangers. They would act in this very same manner. The worst dot case scenario would be to call the police on them. He pondered things for a while, trying to find a way to give her the magic glasses. If he just gave them to her out of the blue, she might not take them. Besides, that would seem suspicious. Suddenly, it was like a light bulb went off in his head. Bai Chen immediately came up with a plan. He turned to look at the genius lady. Even while turning her profile to him, she still looked unwaveringly beautiful. Dot, sister, do you want to have your fortune told? I'm very good at it. This time she would not even look at him. The woman kept looking down without taking her gaze off the grass in front of her. Her beautiful eyebrows, however, furrowed, showing her dissatisfaction towards this boy who was trying to court her. Bai Chen did not care much about her attitude because he knew how he was going to play this. He believed that the success rate would be 100% with this one. He stood up and said casually, too bad you're not interested, sister. I saw a sorrowful aura coming off you, so I wanted to help a little. After having said that, he turned around and gradually walked away while mumbling softly, too bad this pretty lady is going blind. His voice made the flawlessly beautiful body of the genius lazy shudder violently. She looked up right away. Her eyes were fixed on the back of the boy who was walking away. She cried out at the top of her lungs, stop. Her loud voice made by Chen halt. The corners of his lips curled up into a smile. It was obvious that this had been part of his plan all along. End of chapter 12 Chapter 13 Rage You are listening at NovelFull.audio Bai Chen slowly turned around to look at the genius lady. Her face was extremely solemn at this moment. What's the matter, sister? Change of heart. How, how did you know that I was going blind? The genius young lady asked. Her cold gaze was locked on by Chen's face, though what she was seeing was quite blurry. Her mind was filled with suspicion and panic. She wondered how this young man had discovered that she was losing the ability to see, because she had not told anyone about this, not even her parents. She was the only one who knew. Her reason for not telling anyone was that she did not want anyone to worry. So, when Bai Chen told her that he knew she was going to lose her vision, how could she not be suspicious? Panic and incredulity rose up within her as well. She might have believed this man was stalking her if she had known him previously. Bai Chen blinked several times. He looked at the genius woman and smiled a little. I'm a fortune teller, sister. Just checking your destiny a little is not a hard thing for me. The woman turned quiet. She did not say anything for many seconds. Her eyes remained locked on Bai Chen, not knowing if he had lied or told the truth. She did not know him, so she was not sure how trustworthy this man was. Above all, she thought he was approaching her with a romantic interest. If he had not mentioned her going blind, she would not even have spared him a glance. Sister, if you don't have anything more to say, I'll have to excuse myself. It's half past five now. I won't be home on time for the evening TV drama, said Bai Chen. Of course, he did not really want to go home now. He only wanted to spur her on a little. Bai Chen wanted her to ask him to tell her fortune, for which he was going to say random things and give her the magic glasses. Afterwards, he was planning to tell her that fate had brought them together. 
the genius lady showed hesitation on her face. You can really predict the future. Of course. If you let me check your fortune, you might not go blind. His words were like adding fuel to the fire. The woman's body shook a little, though she still did not believe what he said. Even a famous physician could only give her an eye transplant, how could a mere eighteen-year-old young man have a better way to cure her blindness? He was clearly just making things up. There was no way she was going to believe him. Fine then. You can give it a try and tell me my fortune. But in the end, she gave in to her curiosity. The lady accepted by Chen's offer to tell her fortune as she wanted to know what he was going to say about her future. Bai Chen smiled at her before walking over to sit beside her. This time he chose to sit very close to her, with only a hand's length of distance between them. This made the genius lady frown. She glared at him with icy cold eyes. What are you doing? I'll have to read your palm. How can I check your fortune if I'm far away from you? Bai Chen explained calmly. He had seen several shows featuring famous fortune tellers, so he knew that there were several ways to tell someone's fortune. Palm reading was one of them. To boost his credibility, Bai Chen had to sit close to her. The genius lady remained silent, though her eyes and demeanor were enough to express her displeasure that he was sitting so close. Show me your palm. I won't take long. And for a beautiful lady like yourself, I won't charge you for my services either. Usually I'm quite expensive though, Bai Chen told her with a smile. He was also trying to behave himself. Sitting this close to her, he was able to breathe in her sweet smell, which made his heart beat fast and threw his emotions into a turmoil. He felt that it was very not befitting for a 30-year-old man like himself to lose his cool just because of a sweet scent coming from of a woman, who happened to be many years younger than him. However, he was not to blame. Bai Chen had never been close to a woman before, much less a beautiful one. The genius woman frowned a little. She felt that she did not like this boy for some reasons, but she still did as she was told, extending her silky pale palm towards him. Bai Chen looked down at her pale delicate hand. He found it very beautiful, and if he could touch it, it would definitely be very soft. The boy shook his head to push away impure thoughts. BL.net After reading her palm for a few moments, he looked up to meet her cold gaze and said in a neutral tone of voice, Sister, your luck is indeed good. You're not going to go blind. Don't be ridiculous. Are you just messing with me? The woman erupted into anger at Bai Chen's words. She felt that it was indeed a mistake to let him tell her fortune. He was only spewing nonsense out of his mouth. How could it be that she was not going blind? Everything was so obvious that it did not require a second thought, his words were just rubbish. Bai Chen was not at all surprised by her wrath. Anyone would have been as angry as she if caught in a similar situation. He did not say anything, merely pulled the beautiful gold dot framed glasses out of the pocket of his jacket. He stood up and at the same time, prepared to hand them to her. End of chapter 13 Chapter 14 Bewildered You are listening at NovelFull.audio Though she saw Bai Chen stand up from the bench he was sitting on, the genius woman's rage did not decrease at all. She stared at him coldly as if he had been enraging her for several years. Who on earth would? Do you think I'm dumb? The woman stood up from the long marble bench. She widened her eyes to glare at him with anger and prepared to turn around and walk away. But before she could do that, Bai Chen said, If you don't believe me, sister, there's nothing I can do. But don't leave yet. I have something for you. You're not talking about those glasses in your hand, right? She did not take her leave but remained there to listen to his words. The glasses in his hand were exceedingly eye-dot-catching, which was why she took notice of them. You're right. These are magic glasses. I made them with the magic spells that I know. If you wear these, you'll be able to see like a normal person even though you're blind. And if you continue to wear them for a while, your sight will return to normal. 
You won't be blind anymore, B. Noel Bai Chen told her calmly, but at the same time was prepared to deal with her wrath. Rubbish, the genius lady bursted out in a cold voice. She felt that the more time she spent with this boy, the angrier she became. It looked like he was toying with her emotions about her impending blindness. Do you take me for a three-year-old who would believe this nonsense? Calm down. Just wear these and you'll see. If they don't do as I've claimed, you can just throw them away. I'm just asking you to give them a try, he said while offering her the magic glasses. For Bai Chen, just this woman taking the glasses would be enough. His mission would be complete, and he would be rewarded 30 points. Therefore, it was not at all peculiar that he would cope with her bad temper with great patience. The genius lady did not answer. She went quiet, eyes locked on the beautiful gold. Framed glasses in Bai Chen's hand. She stared at them for a long while because her sight was now all weak and blurry. Everything was so unclear. After taking a closer look, the woman was overcome by a sense of awe, all because she saw that the glasses' frames were made of pure gold. She did not greatly enjoy wearing accessories, but she was knowledgeable enough to realize what was genuine and what was not. She had never imagined that this 18 year old boy would have glasses made of pure gold. He must be the son of a rich family whose wealth is in its second generation, otherwise, there's no way this guy would have customized glasses made from gold like these, the genius lady thought to herself. At the same time, the woman felt disgust towards Bai Chen. She clearly had the misunderstanding that he really was the son of a rich family whose wealth was in its second generation pretending to wear normal clothing worth a few hundred yuan just for the purpose of courting her. Fine, I'll take them. She still took his glasses. In her eyes, they were quite beautiful, and it was also one of the ways to alleviate her anger. Taking the glasses meant she would get to make the boy in front of her lose something precious without getting anything from her in return. She reached out her hand to take the gift. After handing over the magic glasses to the woman, Bai Chen turned around and bolted. He ran away quite fast, disappearing from the blurry sight of the genius lady in a flash. He fled was because he did not want to run into complications after handing over the gift. That very problem was the effect of the magic glasses. After the woman wore them, she would definitely feel flabbergasted. Then, Bai Chen would definitely be interrogated about how he made the glasses, even though he had already lied to her about making the glasses with his magic spells. Bai Chen could only hope that he would never run into her ever again, because he did not want to tell her anything about the life-changing system. The genius lady felt sudden shock when she saw Bai Chen speeding off like that. She could not see him in her field of vision any longer because her eyesight was very hazy. What on earth? The lady could only make her remark with confusion. She could not follow through with what was happening. The woman did not understand why Bai Chen would hurriedly escape after giving her the gold dot framed glasses. After a while, she shook her head helplessly. It looked like this guy she had met was actually bonkers. She lowered her head to look at the gold dot framed glasses in her hand, flipping them around to study them and realizing that they were indeed made from real gold. That guy is really the son of a rich family whose wealth is in its second generation. Or else, there would be no way he could have had these glasses custom dot made, she mumbled before pulling apart the temples of the glasses and putting them on. As soon as she put them on, her eyes almost doubled in size with bewilderment. Her vision was no longer cloudy, but clear as day. W, what's this? Her lips parted slightly, letting out a raspy sound. She could now see very clearly, her vision was no longer blurred. The genius woman blinked multiple times to make sure that what she was seeing was real. The scene in front of her was indeed a confirmation that she was not wrong. Her heart raced and her breathing grew heavy. The woman inhaled deeply, trying to calm down. She took the glasses off and found that her vision reverted to its cloudy state. What happened exactly? What are these lenses made of? How can I see everything so clearly? Her eyebrows knitted with curiosity and bewilderment. 
she could not understand how only these glasses could clear up her vision, unlike the many other expensive eyeglasses she had tried on today. End of Chapter 14 Chapter 15 Low, Grade Martial Arts Technique You are listening at NovelFull.audio Bai Chin got back home at a little bit past six in the evening. He parked his bicycle at the side of his house and went in with a deep frown, this was because the mission.accomplishment window had not popped up yet. He could only wonder why it did not pop up. Could it be that he had not completed his mission after all? Little Chen, what made you return so late? As soon as he entered, his mum, who was decluttering and cleaning the house, shouted out a question. I went for a stroll at Xingxiang Park, mum, replied by Chen. Oh, you were walking around the park. Okay then, hurry up and go take a shower first before you come down for dinner, his mum responded. Okay, mum. The boy nodded to at his mother before walking upstairs. He showered hurriedly, changed his clothes, and went down to have dinner with his parents. After finishing their meal, Bai Chen returned to his room on the second floor. He was feeling quite down because it looked like Mission 4 was not complete yet. The success window still had not popped up. He sat on his bed and was about to open the system to see what was going on, but a mission.accomplishment window suddenly appeared. Ding. Mission complete. Mission 4. Save a genius young lady who is going blind, success, reward. You have received 30 points and the opportunity to receive special skills or items at random. Bai Chen blinked, looking at the transparent white window that had appeared with a relieved expression. He sighed a little. He could not help but feel excited. This time he had gotten himself a lot of points and one chance for randomization. Not wanting to waste any more time, Bai Chen quickly opened the life changing system window to check. The life changing system, user. Bai Chen age. 18 years old level. 1, 70 100, description. You still need 30 points to level up. Instruction. If you wish to change your life to what you have always wanted, proceed with the following missions. Mission Dashboard, Mission 5. Take a night's rest, 5 points, Mission 6. Solve a problem you encounter in the morning, 10 points, further instruction. The order of mission completion is irrelevant. After you are done with the tasks assigned to you, you will be given a chance to receive special skills or items at random. The skills or items will give you a better life. You have one opportunity to get special skills or items at random. Dot after checking the detail window, the corners of Bai Chen's mouth lifted up into a smile. 30 points left, and I'll level up. Now, please give me a nice item. He chose the randomize feature without hesitation. Bai Chen pressed his fingertip onto the roulette wheel. A roulette wheel with alternating red and black pockets appeared, with the words skills or item written on them. Bai Chen did not waste time. He quickly pressed the button in the center of the roulette wheel. The roulette wheel began to spin rapidly. Many seconds later, it started to slow down and stopped at the skills tab. Ding. Congratulations, you have received a low-dot-grade martial arts technique. Bai Chen's eyes widened with surprise. He had never thought that he would gain a special skill. This was all quite different from his expectation, as he wanted special items more. Never thought I would get a special skill. He, nevertheless, could not help but check the description of the low-dot-grade martial arts technique, because this was the first time that he had ever received a special skill. Low dot grade martial arts technique. Description. A long, long time ago, a young master of the Hua Zen sect created this martial arts technique. It has powerful punching and kicking combat moves. Those who practice this technique are believed to have a strong steel. Like body that cannot be hurt either by knives or by swords. However, it is just a small part of the whole technique, thus making it of a low grade. Grades of special skills. Low, medium, high, supreme. As soon as his eyes swept across the description, 
his brain was flooded with different types of combat moves. There was quite a lot of knowledge, and it made him feel as if he had been trained with this technique for a really long time. So, this is what it's like getting a special skill, he mumbled to himself with great surprise. Bai Chen had never imagined that this was how it would be. Now he was quite sure that he would be able to take down 20 to 30 hooligans very easily. His eyes were filled with joy. Having the ability to fight would help him protect both himself and his parents. If he had to fight Ba Guan, who had previously hidden illegal drugs in his room in accordance with Wang Qingye's orders, it would definitely be a piece of cake. After learning the low-dot-grade martial arts technique, Bai Chen clicked to see details of the new mission. He chose to look at Mission 6, but not Mission 5, because he had already seen it. Mission 6. Solve a problem you encounter in the morning. Instructions. You'll run into a problem tomorrow morning. Please resolve it. Reward for success. Win 10 points penalty for failure. None. Reading through the details of the mission made him frown a little, because this mission did not clearly lay out specific details about what he had to do like the previous ones. It told him to solve a problem, but would not tell him what the problem would be. But it probably won't be that difficult because it's only worth 10 points. Despite being a bit curious about the new mission, Bai Chen did not think that it would be hard to solve, because the reward that he would get was only 10 points. The past missions had made him more aware of how the mission mechanics worked, with one of the rules being. The more points given, the tougher the mission would be. End of chapter 15 Chapter 16 The Four-Eyed Nerd, Qian Bei You are listening at NovelFull.audio Bai Chen went through his morning routine like how he usually had every day twelve years ago in his previous life. He got up, showered, changed, went downstairs for breakfast with his parents, helped with preparations in the shop, and left home for school. He left his house on the same bicycle, traveling the same road he used yesterday to get to Xingxiang School. Today was also like yesterday. He was greeted with warm smiles by many people in the business district. Bai Chen also smiled back. The weather today was quite nicer than yesterday, so the boy pedaled his bicycle slowly to enjoy today's pleasant atmosphere. When he cycled past the spot where the mysterious man was yesterday, he was nowhere to be seen. Bai Chen rode past without giving it much thought, though. He thought that once his mission ended, he had no reason to care about the mysterious guy anymore. As he was about to reach the school on his bicycle, Bai Chen heard a sound in his head. A mission window popped up all of a sudden. Ding. Mission complete. Mission 5. Take a night's rest, 5 points, reward. You have received 5 points. Bai Chen pulled over on the side of road, looking at the system window that had popped up with a hint of disappointment that he did not get the roulette offer of the roulette will this time. He knew though that getting such an opportunity was not always the case. Nevertheless, he was quite happy because he had been waiting for this mission to be over since he had gotten up this morning. Only 25 points left. Bai Chen thought to himself that he would definitely complete missions today to earn 25 points so he could level up. He then called up the mission window to see the details of the new mission. Mission Dashboard, Mission 6 Solve a problem you encounter in the morning, 10 points, Mission 7. Apologize to a resentful woman, 15 points, further instruction. The order of mission completion is irrelevant. After you are done with the tasks assigned to you, you will be given a chance to receive special skills or items at random. The skills or items will give you a better life. Bai Chen stared at the mission dashboard with an odd feeling. He found the new mission quite bizarre. Apologize to a resentful woman. What in the world was this mission? With burning curiosity, he didn't waste time in pressing to see the details of Mission 7. Mission 7. Apologize to a resentful woman. Instruction. A cute girl has harbored ill feelings and anger towards you in the past. If you don't hurry up and apologize to her now, your relationship will come to an end. Reward for success. 
win 15 points penalty for failure. Your relationship with her will be severed. After checking out the mission details, an image of an adorable girl popped into his head. Bai Chen could not help but smile. The girl in his mind right now was Li Lin. Even if I didn't get this mission, I would have apologized to her anyway, Bai Chen said to himself while shaking his head. But he thought that this would work too since it was like killing two birds with one stone. Wait, if this mission rewards 15 points, then when combined with mission 6, I would get exactly 25 points. When he realized this fact, Bai Chen had to smile happily. It was now certain that he would reach level 2 today. Let's hurry up and go to school to complete more missions then, said Bai Chen. He continued to ride his bicycle to school, which was already quite nearby. A few moments later, Bai Chen arrived at the school. He hurried off to park his bicycle in the parking lot first. After he had parked, Bai Chen prepared to walk up to class. It was at that moment that the mission window appeared in front of him, with a green arrow pointing in one direction. Mission 6. Solve a problem you encounter in the morning. Instructions. You'll run into a problem tomorrow morning. Please resolve it. Reward for success. Win 10 points penalty for failure. None. I was waiting for this. Bai Chen was already itching to complete a mission. When one appeared, how could he not be eager? He hurriedly followed where the arrow pointed. After turning the corner of a building, he was stunned by what he saw. Five schoolboys had surrounded a boy with glasses, who looked frightened. One of the boys in the gang was someone he knew very well. Ba Guan. Bai Chen did not intervene to stop this problem right away. He hid himself around the corner of the building to observe what was happening. W. What do you guys want? The boy with glasses said timidly. His face was slightly pale when he looked around at the five guys surrounding him. Ba Guan, who appeared to be the leader of the pack this time, smiled a little. The four that I'd nerd, Qian Bei, I heard you are extremely wealthy. Won't you share some of your cash with us? That's right. I heard you are quite wealthy. Sharing with us a little bit won't hurt, will it? As Ba Guan finished speaking, a boy with an ugly face spoke. This guy was called Yong Gua. He was one of Ba Guan's most loyal sidekicks. As boss Ba Guan and Yong Gua said, hurry up and give us cash. Yeah, if you don't, you know what will happen to you, right? That the other three made their threats as well. Their eyes were black with greed and they looked at the meek chubby sheep called Qian Bei. H. How dare you guys threaten to extort me? I'll never give you anything. Qian Bei's face lost even more color. He felt that today was indeed an unfortunate day for him. Never had he thought that these classroom thugs would try to extort him like this. Even though he did have cash, he would never, ever want to give it to them. End of chapter 16. Chapter 17 Extortion You are listening at novelfull.audio. You're not gonna give us your money. Ba Guan's face darkened when he heard Qian Bei's words. In his view, Qian Bei choosing to surrender the cash to him and his sidekicks was the right thing to do. How dare you refuse to give us your money? You want us to beat you to a pulp, huh? Yong Gua spoke while cracking his knuckles with a dissatisfied expression. He did not expect Qian Bei to still refuse to give up his cash, despite being caught in the middle of this gang of five. Others would have handed it over on a silver platter by now. The other three thugs' facial expressions were as unhappy as Yong Gua's. They walked a little closer to Qian Bei. One of them said threateningly, Are you giving us the money or not? Qian Bei's face went even paler. He was completely terrified of these people in front of him, but he still did not want to give up the money. If he surrendered, he would not have enough cash to buy the action figure of Nami. Chan from One Piece. I, I'm not gonna give you the money. Qian Bei screamed. He started to find a way to escape by finding a gap in the circle. When he found one, Qian Bei bolted. However, he could not get through. 
Ba Guan's lips twisted into a cold smile as he stuck his leg out to block Qian Bei's escape. In the end, Qian Bei staggered and fell to the floor after hitting Ba Guan's leg. His glasses were covered in dirt. Ouch, that hurts. Qian Bei screamed with pain. He hit the ground hard, both hands scratched and wounded until they reeked of blood. This bastard. You're not gonna give us the cash and run. How simple dot minded. Yong Gua jeered and walked over to kick Qian Bei's stomach. The unfortunate boy shrieked and curled up into a ball. A dot aren't you worried that I'm gonna report you to the teachers? Why are you doing this? Xian Bei tried not to cry out, he tried to speak instead. He looked up at Ba Guan and his gang with fear. Do Vi Ko, teacher. Which one? You think the teachers would believe you? There's only one of you, but there are five of us. Where are you going to get your evidence from? Ba Guan smiled faintly. He thought this four dot eyed nerd Qian Bei was really dumb. So, you'd better give us the money. That way, we'll let you go. You lot, when he heard what Ba Guan said, Qian Bei was at loss for words. The nerdy boy thought that what Ba Guan said was right. Even if he went and told on these thugs, the teachers would never believe it. The worst. Case scenario would be the teachers accusing him of being a liar. In the end, Qian Bei sighed. He was left without a choice. He really had to give these people his money. Otherwise, they would beat him to a pulp, which he clearly did not want. How much do you guys want? Ba Guan, Yong Gua, and the others smiled. They were certain that their extortion would also be successful this time, because Qian Bei was not the first person they had done this to. There were many predecessors, and all gave Ba Guan's gang what they wanted. Give me 10,000 yuan then. Your family's rich, after all. It'll barely be a drop in the bucket for you. Ba Guan's lips curled up into his greedy smile. Qian Bei's eyes widened in panic. He shrieked loudly, 10,000. Are you out of your mind? How would I have that much money? I only have 500 yuan on me. What? You're thinking of giving us that 500 yuan petty cash. Boss Guan, let's beat this bastard up, shall we? Yong Gua's heart pounded fast in his chest when he heard that Qian Bei had 500 yuan with him. This was because every time they extorted someone, they only got 50 to 60 yuan. The best they did was 80. He only said what he had to scare the living daylights out of Qian Bei. And Ba Guan's demand of 10,000 yuan was, of course, a lie. It was his regular demand when extorting people, as it was really useful for getting other students to accurately reveal the amount of money they had. 500 yuan. Not bad at all. Ba Guan could not help but feel pleased with his ill-gotten gains today. This was his best return since he established a gang with his sidekicks to extort other students. Qian Bei sighed when he heard Ba Guan's words of satisfaction regarding his 500 yuan. If these hooligans really wanted 10,000 yuan, it might be better if he just let them beat him up. There was no way he could have that much money. Even though his family was really well dot off, his daily spending limit was still 500 yuan. Ba Guan's other sidekicks did not say anything, they only smiled. It looked like today they were going to have many nice things from their ill-gotten gains. Qian Bei slowly stood up and stuck his hand into the pocket of his trousers. He was about to give his money to Ba Guan when someone's voice rang out. Robbing other students. Bro Guan, my friend, you must have a lot of free time. Everyone turned around to see who that voice belonged to. Ba Guan's pupils contracted when he saw who it was. Bro Chen. The owner of that voice was, indeed, Bai Chen. Now he knew what problems they were having. It could not even be called their problems, because the troublemakers were Ba Guan's crew, who were trying to rob Qian Bei blind. At first, he was fine with just observing. When things went downhill to the point of physical abuse and Qian Bei having to give up his money, he was no longer able to stand still. 
If that was the case, his mission would definitely fail. It's me. I'm gonna give you 10 seconds. If you don't hurry up and get out of my sight, you'll definitely get your beating. Bai Chen walked over and stopped in front of Ba Guan. He spoke with confidence, which was rooted in his recent obtainment of the low dot grade martial arts technique. Without this martial arts technique, there would be no way Bai Chen could feel this self dot assured. He would not be able to handle the five of them otherwise. End of chapter 17. Chapter 18 Severed You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Bro Chen, what did you just say? Ba Guan thought he was mistaken. He stared at Bai Chen, while Yong Gua and the others frowned unhappily. Never thought you would be deaf, Bro Guan. I told you and your crew to bugger off. Bai Chen was ready to take his revenge. He knew very well that Ba Guan would not leave like he'd told him to. Ha ha ha. Ba Guan laughed when he heard Bai Chen's words. Never had he imagined that this day would come, the day when Bai Chen dared to talk to him like this, which was, in fact, not a bad thing for him at all. Actually, he thought that he was done using Bai Chen. It was now time to teach him a lesson. And what time would be more fitting than now when Bai Chen was the one who started it? This was the best excuse for him to easily beat him up. You've got guts. Boss Guan, should we just beat him up? Yong Gua was very upset at Bai Chen's words. His face was hostile when he saw Bai Chen's nonchalant expression. Of course, it was not only Yong Gua who was upset. Ba Guan's three sidekicks were also dissatisfied. Their faces signaled that they were ready to smash him to a pulp. As for Qian Bei, he was dumbfounded. He had never thought that anyone would step in to help. And this guy was actually a person he knew well, it was the forever top of class, Bai Chen. He had never spoken a word to Bai Chen before, so he did not know why Bai Chen would save him. Nevertheless, Qian Bei felt grateful to Bai Chen from the bottom of his heart for what he had done. He was about to tell the guy not to jump in. From the look of things, there was no way Bai Chen could take down Ba Guan's gang of five. However, Qian Bei did not get a chance to speak his mind because Ba Guan had already rushed towards Bai Chen. His face was no longer smiling. There was only rage painted on it. You really want to get pulverized. Piece of trash. It was obvious that Ba Guan did not want Yong Gua and his other sidekicks to beat Bai Chen up, because he wanted to do it himself. Today was the day their friendships came to an end. Bai Chen watched as Ba Guan's body approached. He did not feel any fear, he only found Ba Guan's speed to extremely slow, like slow motion. It looked like this was the ability from the low dot grade martial arts technique he'd obtained. Take this fist of father's fury. Ba Guan shouted before swinging his fist at Bai Chen's face. He gave it all he had without holding back. Yong Gua and the other three smiled in satisfaction at Ba Guan's action. They all thought that Bai Chen would be nothing more than a mere rag after being assaulted by Ba Guan. S. Stop it. Qian Bei screamed in panic. His thought was the same as that of Yong Gua's crew. He thought Bai Chen would definitely be gravely injured after taking Ba Guan's punch to the face. However, an unexpected thing happened. Bai Chen slowly reached out to take Ba Guan's fist. Thud. The sound of the fist and the palm crashing against each other rang out. Ba Guan's expression changed. He felt as if he had just punched metal. His fist shook violently. He felt great pain. His fist loosened up and drooped down. It was clear that he had broken his wrist, just like that, only by punching Bai Chen's palm. Ack! Ba Guan shrieked and fell to his knees on the ground. His face was pale and colorless from great pain. Bo! Ba Guan! Yong Gua and the other three screamed in panic. They could not quite believe what they had witnessed. How could a person as strong as Ba Guan be finished off by Bai Chen? Avenge our boss! Yong Gua shouted. 
he chose to ignore Ba Guan's condition and assumed the role of leader, fearing that Bai Chen would run away. The other sidekicks also understood his intention. They all followed Yong Gua's lead and rushed out to circle Bai Chen, their faces solemn. Anyone who could deal with Ba Guan should be quite skilled in combat. But they all thought one person would lose against their number, so they were not too concerned. The four of them thought they could beat Bai Chen up easily to avenge their boss. Bai Chen also acted like he did not care about being surrounded. He looked at Ba Guan, who was holding his wrist with a pale face and a twisted, painful expression. The boy spoke in a cold voice. Get this in your head, Ba Guan. Don't show your face to me ever again. Otherwise, it won't be just your wrist that is broken. I'll make sure to break your leg and arm too. After speaking his mind, Bai Chen did not wait for Ba Guan's reply. He kicked Ba Guan's face, sending the boy flying to land on top of one of his sidekicks, pushing them both to the side. Ba Guan's and his sidekick's bodies flew over and hit the wall. Both of them were dot knocked out cold. How dare you! Let's get this bastard! Yong Gua was slightly caught off guard. But he quickly pulled himself together and shouted out in haste. The other two nodded and rushed over to beat up Bai Chen. Unfortunately, their punches were too slow. Bai Chen's fist landed on each of their faces, sending them flying towards the wall and passing out just like Ba Guan. Damn it! Yong Gua saw the situation unfold before his eyes and thought helplessly about escaping. He spun around, preparing to bolt, not caring about taking revenge for Ba Guan anymore. Looking at how Bai Chen had dealt with three of his crew, it was not hard at all to finish him, too. If that was the case, why bother staying and getting hurt? But before he got the chance to run, Yong Gua's vision went cloudy with twinkling stars. Bai Chen's punch had landed directly on his face. End of chapter 18 Chapter 19 Apologize You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Yong Gua's body slowly fell to the ground. He landed on his back and blacked out. Bai Chen looked down with a faint smile, never having thought that receiving the low dot grade martial arts technique would improve his combat abilities like this. He could not help but think of other skills he would acquire in the future. Perhaps they would be even more surprising. Ding! Mission complete. Mission 6. Solve a problem you encounter in the morning, success, reward. You have received 10 points. The mission window popped up in front of him. Bai Chen stared at it with slight regret that he had not gotten the roulette bonus. However, he was still happy with the additional 10 points. He had 85 points now. Only 15 more and he would level up. Bai Chen closed the mission.accomplishment window before opening the dashboard to check out new missions. Mission Dashboard, Mission 7 Apologize to the resentful woman, 15 points, Mission 8 Catch the snatch thief in the Xing Seng Business District, 15 points, further instruction. The order of mission completion is irrelevant. After you are done with the tasks assigned to you, you will be given a chance to receive special skills or items at random. The skills or items will give you a better life. After seeing the new mission, Mission 8, Bai Chen's eyebrows knitted a little. He had no idea there was a snatch thief in Xing Seng Business District, where he lived. He could not help but click to see the mission details. Mission 8 Catch the snatch thief in the Xing Seng Business District. Instruction Recently, a snatch thief has been appearing in the Xing Seng Business District, causing many people to suffer the loss of their belongings. Reward for success Win 15 points penalty for failure. Customer traffic decreases. Bai Chen ground his teeth loudly. The fact that there was a thief in the Xing Seng district alone was enough to anger him a little. This was because his house was a small Chinese steamed bun shop in the business district itself. His parents had to get up at 3 in the morning to make Chinese steamed buns and the dim sum so that they could give him a good life and a good education. How could he not be mad? 
having a thief lingering around the district meant there would be fewer customers. You nasty thief. Just you wait till my school day ends. I'll take care of you. Bai Chen said this before closing the system window. He then spun around and walked away without sparing a glance at Qian Bei, who was sitting on the ground with wide eyes and his mouth agape. Ah, Qian Bei acted as if he had just snapped back to reality. His facial expression had stayed like that for a long time, from when Ba Guan was crying in pain until now. Qian Bei quickly got up, shouted, and ran after Bai Chen. Wait for me, boss Bai. Bai Chen halted and turned around to look at Qian Bei. The boy frowned a little, what did you just call me? I called you Boss Bai. I am very impressed and in awe of your prowess after seeing you take down Ba Guan's gang of five. From now on, I'm gonna call you Boss Bai. Thank you very much for helping me. Otherwise, I would have had to give that crew my money, Qian Bei said with great enthusiasm. Whatever floats your boat then. Bai Chen decided not to make any comments. He only helped Qian Bei because it was the mission he had been given. He could not care less what Qian Bei called him. Bai Chen turned around and continued walking. As he saw Bai Chen walking away, Qian Bei went back to stomp on the five poor unconscious members of Ba Guan's gang, marking their faces and clothes with his footprints. You lowly thugs! Remember the footprint of this high and mighty Qian Bei. After satisfactorily leaving footprints on them, Qian Bei spoke happily and quickly ran after Bai Chen. Bai Chen did not go up to class immediately but went to a shop inside the school. He bought a huge 10. yuan pack of crisps and made his way towards the classroom. He was not alone though. The four that I'd nerd Qian Bei was always with him babbling nonsense like dot do you watch anime? Do you like Nami dot Chan from One Piece? Or things of that sort. Bai Chen only absent dot mindedly went along with what Qian Bei was saying without paying much attention to him because he had to be careful with whom he made friends with from now on. Otherwise, there would be the second and third versions of Ba Guan. After a while, he and Qian Bei arrived at their classroom. Many people were already there when they entered the room. Li Lin was also present. Qian Bei told him that he would treat him to lunch, then walked over to his desk. Bai Chen nodded in acknowledgement before walking over to Li Lin. She looked at him with an extremely stern and stone-cold face. It looked like she really despised his existence. Li Lin, can I have a word with you? Bai Chen stopped in front of Li Lin and asked in a formal, polite tone of voice. Li Lin glanced at him indifferently, I don't want to talk to you. Can you just stop trying to talk to me? Many students in the class were observing this incident with interest. All the boys and girls liked juicy gossip. From their point of view, Bai Chen was definitely trying to court Li Lin. That was because she was really pretty. Many boys in the class had tried to court her, but no one had succeeded. Every single one had been rejected in the most humiliatingly face dot shattering manner. Bai Chen sighed. He had never thought that what had happened during childhood would affect him now. What do you want me to do to make you stop being angry with me? I'm sorry for what happened in kindergarten. I was really naughty back then. Li Lin was taken aback for a moment. She had not thought that Bai Chen would ask to talk to her so he could apologize. She had a confused expression on her face, clearly feeling helpless in this situation. End of chapter 19 Dio Vico. Chapter 20 You Mean a Date You are listening at novelfull.audio Li Lin did not say a word, so Bai Chen thought she had not forgiven him. But he had to make that happen, partly because of the guilt and partly because of the mission. What do you say? What do I have to do to make you forgive me, he said while putting a bag of snacks in front of her. Would this count as a redemption for stealing your snacks back then? When Li Lin heard what Bai Chen said, her pretty round eyes blinked rapidly in confusion. She still honestly did not know how to act in this situation. Li Lin found herself in a helpless position. Suddenly, a jeering voice sounded. 
Can't you see that Li Lin is not happy with this, yet you still dare to court her? By the way, what's with your tactic anyway? You bought her a cheap bag of crisps. A boy in a nice dot looking expensive outfit walked into the room with a huge bouquet of red roses in hand. His face was slightly good dot looking, but not too much. He would be classified as having moderately good looks. Bai Chen turned to look at the guy who had spoken and was walking into the room. He instantly remembered that the other party was Ao Song. He was the son of a well dot to dot do family, though not extremely wealthy. He, however, very much liked to show off and often insulted his classmates. Ao Song had been trying to court Li Lin for a very long time. He planned to marry up. Li Lin's background, in terms of both her looks and financial status, made her the one and only priceless flower of Xing Xiang school. Whoever got to be her boyfriend would be a lucky man indeed. This made Ao Song want to catch her. And by, catch, he meant becoming richer through marriage. He wanted to be one of the wealthy, and being able to live an opulent life without having to flex a muscle for the rest of his life. Li Lin hated Ao Song's guts. She hated this boy even more than Bai Chen because he kept following her around like an annoying fly that would never go away. Sorry, I was not trying to court her, Bai Chen told Ao Song calmly before turning back to look at Li Lin and saying, if you won't forgive me, then that's fine. As soon as he was done speaking, he immediately left the room. He left Li Lin staring with a confused expression. Ao Song was just as confused. He actually thought that Bai Chen would say something back. But the boy did not do anything. He just left. Other students in the room had a different view on this, though. From their perspective, there was only one explanation. Bai Chen had been rejected by Li Lin, and he could not bear the embarrassment, so he left the room. Boss, wait up. Qian Bei, who had been observing what had gone down, felt really sorry for his boss Bai. He shouted after him and rushed out of the classroom to console Bai Chen. Dot, what a coward. Finally, Ao Song snapped out of his confusion. He forced himself to speak and put on a smile while walking towards Li Lin. Li Lin, look. Today, I bought you another huge rose bouquet. Have you decided to be my girlfriend yet? Li Lin snapped out of her confusion as well. She ignored Ao Song and rushed out of the room after Bai Chen. After thinking this matter through, she now knew that it was just some kindergarten stuff. What would she hate him for? He had just apologized to her sincerely. If she still refused to forgive him, that would make her a narrow dot-minded person, wouldn't it? When Ao Song saw Li Lin walk past without paying him any attention, the boy felt a rush of anger in his heart. He could only grind his teeth loudly, sulkily, and sullenly, though there was no way to release that anger. Bai Chen walked quite fast. He had already reached the stairway to the lower floors, but he had not yet walked down them, because he could hear Qian Bei's voice calling him from behind. Qian Bei's voice made him turn around to take a look. The nerdy guy was rushing toward him with great speed, before coming to a halt in front of him. Boss Bai, don't be sad. There is plenty of fish in the sea. The first thing Qian Bei said was words of consolation. Bai Chen did not know whether to laugh or cry. He wanted to tell the guy that he was not trying to court Li Lin, he only wanted to apologize to her about something that happened when they were kids. But thinking it through, there was no need for Bai Chen to explain himself to Qian Bei, so, in the end, he chose to stay quiet. The reason that he walked out of the room was none other than trying to get Li Lin to chase after him. From a 30.year.old man's perspective, Li Lin was but a young girl. She surely would not want to feel guilty for not forgiving him. He truly believed this. And it was exactly like that. Li Lin really followed him out. Bai Chen told Qian Bei, who was trying to console him, softly, you go back first. Qian Bei was silent. He was momentarily stunned, before following Bai Chen's line of sight past him. 
the boy could not stop from turning around to see Li Lin making her way towards them. He was speechless then. It seemed that his thoughts were too simple. Qian Bei could not help but give Bai Chen a thumb dot up before walking past Li Lin to return to the classroom. Li Lin stood still in front of Bai Chen. She reached her delicate, snow dot white hand out. Where is it? Bai Chen smiled and willingly gave her the bag of crisps he was holding. So, does that mean you forgive me now? Yes. But this isn't over yet. Tomorrow you will have to go shopping with me. I want you to be my servant for the day, then I'll truly forgive you, Li Lin said. Bai Chen did not expect Li Lin to say this. He thought about it a little before feeling excited. You mean a date? A date? What are you talking about? Li Lin's pretty round eyes widened when she heard what he said. She quickly hit him with the bag of crisps. It's not. Bai Chen couldn't help but rub his face. He was not at all hurt. The reason he got excited over dating was that he had never hung out with any girls before in his life. End of chapter 20